Happy week seven of remote learning, guys. We have arrived at our very last story from our My View reading series for this year. And this one is Noah's, Nora's Ark. <laughs> I keep saying Noah's Ark. Nora's Ark. And it is a historical fiction story. So today we are going to learn um, what a historical fiction story is. It's kind of like uh, Grandpa's turn at the ballot box, historical fiction, uh, the events that led up to it are real, but the characters may not be. So we'll look at that today. This week, we're also going to be analyzing the point of view for the characters, and we're going to make connections to what we know from our lives and connect it with the characters in the story. So please meet me over on page 536, where we're going to start our weekly launch. I've got to move us up. So we are starting with something I've mentioned to you before, especially when we talked about weather. It's um, right here is a primary source. That means a source that um, is firsthand. This is about the Dust Bowl. And the weekly question is, how should people respond during a disaster? We've worked up to this, this whole unit um, with how to be prepared and what can happen with weather and events like that. So today we're going to examine this primary source called um, the Dust Bowl. If you look at it, these are primary sources because they're real and they're photographs with captions and dates and everything factual. So the Dust Bowl here. So follow along with me, please. In the 1930s, Lack of rain and overused farm farmland created disaster for the Plains states. And if you look down here, guys, it's showing you what they're talking about. The Great Plains are right here. This section of our country where all the farming, I shouldn't say all the farming, but a majority of the farming um, states are. Um, this happens to be centered in Kansas. The Dust Bowl drought of the 1930s affected 19 states and lasted from 1931 to 19. 1939. That's eight years. That's a long time to have huge drought and no crops. Dust storms brought high, strong winds that blew dust everywhere. Skies were dark for days during the storms. Homes were either destroyed or filled with dust. Food was scarce. People headed west to find work and a new life. So everybody that lived here were like, we got to get out of here. We don't have our farm, we've lost everything. The seeds literally blew away. They packed everything on their cars and they headed west. So they headed west to California to work the crops there. Read some eyewitness accounts in these diary entries of Mabel Holmes, who lived in Topeka, Kansas, to find out what life was like during the Dust Bowl. So that's why Kansas is highlighted. And we've got a real photo here. March 15th, 1935. Elma's Boys are in a tournament at high school tonight. A terrible wind and dust storm could not hang out the clothes. Max moved to 1134 Polk and at GT Bend, Kansas in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. The wind and dust is so bad motorists have had to stop. So Great Bend, Kansas. So this is just kind of notes of what their day diary entry was. And look over here. This is just dirt. Dirt and dust and... Off in the distance, you see the big old cloud. Off here, you see just destroyed crops and nothing, just tumbleweeds. It looks almost like big old drifts of snow, but it looks more like a dune instead of lush farmland. March 16th, 1935. Temp went from 82 to 24 today. The dust wave blew all night. At times, could not see everything covered with dirt. Dried the clothes in the bathroom, got them ironed, another war scare in Europe. Max was here all p.m., several deaths and accidents from the dust storms. Trains were late. This is someone's diary, so we kind of have to interpret what's there. March 20th, 1935. A severe dust storm raged over the city all day, could not see Dibble's Plaza, nor get around in the house without a light, because it's so dark. It's like nighttime. March 21st, 1935. The houses are in terrible condition from the storm. Was over an hour getting dust off the porches and walks. More dust flying, but do not need lights. So that day, 
super awful cleanup from the mess, but she didn't need any, wow, she didn't need any lights that day. So look at this. This looks like a huge drift of snow, like what we would see during the wintertime, but that's all sand that would normally be beautiful crops of corn or beans. So our weekly question this week is how should people respond during a disaster? So with your family, discuss how this first-hand account of the Dust Bowl helps you better understand how people cope with a disaster. Listen actively to your partner and take notes on your discussion. You do not have to take notes, but talk with your family about what it would be like and how reading that makes you feel. So here's our anchor chart for this week, historical fiction. Um, the setting is a time period that is real in a place that is real. The characters, they might be real, made up, or both. The plot, um, the events can be real or they can be made up, but they happen during the time that was there. Or an event that was very much there, but not necessarily real. Point of view, the story is told in the first person or third person point of view. So if I told you the story from first person, I would say, I, 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 I. But if I told it from third person, it would be Mrs. Childs, la, 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 Mrs. Childs this, Mrs. Childs that, instead of I, I, I. And the theme, the story often contains a theme or message about life. So think about what the life lesson from this story might be. Turn your page and we're going to find our vocab. Get my little whiteboard for that. Marilyn ran off with the markers at some point. So hopefully I can find some. Maybe not our favorite color though. Ooh. Yep. Got it. Okay. Our first word is survived. I feel like we've come across this many times in our reading. survived. If you survived something, what happened? Like our I survived books, what is what is the premise of those? You what? You lived to live through. So you lived through something. Astonished. Wow. Astonished. That's a great word. Astonished is a synonym for unbelievable. Like you cannot believe it. It's astonishing. It's amazing. It's, it could be negative or positive. But when we look through in our book, we're going to find astonished. Oh man in there for a little bit. I do like this story though. Very surprised or amazed. So amazed, surprised, can't believe it, is astonished. The next word is dangerous. Oh we've discussed that so many times. Something that is unsafe or dangerous. Dangerous means unsafe. unsafe, might cause harm, both of those work, cause harm, unsafe. Ooh, this next word is a good one, I know we haven't had it. Uh, it's like, piteously. Hmm. Someone takes pity, feels sorry for, suffering. So it's the LY says in a way that, so it's like a sad way, suffering way. People are suffering, they take pity. 
like in a suffering way. And finally, relief. If you, you have a headache and you take some Tylenol, you might feel relief at the end. So a feeling of happiness or a feeling of um, just feeling better overall, you get some relief from something. In our story, it's going to be a feeling of happiness. Feeling of happiness. relief after worrying feeling relief so you're feeling better after something you're feeling happy after something so um tomorrow when we listen we are going to be looking for the different parts of historical fiction so tomorrow i want you to be thinking of where this setting is can we identify the place and when it happened um look for characters that could be real or are real and for the plot we'll look something that is for real something that happened and then things that may be made up and then what is the story told from is it told from does the are there any i i i's or is it um mrs child's mrs child's and what are they trying to teach us that's what we will look for tomorrow when we listen